Hello, this is Jason Keller with Total Tech Resource. Today we are going to start our introductory sessions to SharePoint. Uh, this session is intended to um, be a valuable resource for people who are getting new to SharePoint and just wanting to learn a little bit more about how SharePoint works. Uh, what it's capable of doing. So in this episode, what we will do is go ahead and examine document libraries. So document libraries are a very important aspect to SharePoint. Uh, they allow for your users to basically be able to store all the documentation uh, that they might otherwise store in like file shares or on their desktop. Uh, the key aspect to SharePoint is collaboration. And by putting documents into SharePoint, uh, you have the ability to collaborate with other people. So what we'll do today is show you quickly how to create a document library, uh, go over some of the basic settings in a document library, such as versioning settings, and uh, show you also some tips as far as how to work with a document library uh, to send emails and be a little bit more efficient. So this will appeal to a, a wide variety of people looking to get started in SharePoint. Uh, one of the first things that you should know is um, you may or may not have access to create document libraries depending on how your administrator, uh, administrator has set up uh, SharePoint. So that being said, you might be able to just add content to a document library, or you might have the possibility if you're a site owner to actually create a document library. So we'll touch on a little bit of both of that today. So in our example here, we are on one of our demo sites here at TTR, and we're on a site called PMO, uh, so like for a project management office. What we want to do is go ahead and create a document library here that will allow for people in the PMO office to collaborate on documents. It could be like project plans, it could be uh, requirements documentation, whatever it might be that the project management office does. So the first way to uh, create a document library is go up to site actions here. So under site actions, you have uh, several different settings. Now depending on your permissions, you may or might, may not have as many options as we see here. Um, I'm a site owner, so I can see a little bit more uh, than just like a contributor could. So a contributor will just be able to add content and they won't have all these key features. So if you want to know what your permission set is, you can just go to site actions. If you see a lot, then you're probably uh, a site owner. Otherwise, you just might be a contributor. Okay, in this case, we hit the site actions, and there's, uh, like in many Microsoft products, multiple ways to create a document library. So, as you can see here, we have new document library. Additionally, we can go to view all site content. Uh, we'll go ahead and just do new document library, and then I'll take you through the other way here in a minute. So, what will happen is a little Silverlight wizard will kick up, and it will ask you some questions. So, in this one, we'll just go ahead and name this share docs share documents. You can put in a description uh, used to share documents. And then right here under navigation, specify whether a link to this document library appears in a quick launch. So the quick launch is over here on the left hand side. So we'll see yes, we want it there. Then it asks you about version history. We're going to say no because I'm going to show you how to do that manually here in a second. And then a document template, we'll just use the basic uh, Word document, but there's some other options is there as well. And this is in a document library. You can actually click new document and it would specify uh, the document type that you can create. Go ahead and create this. All right, so now you can see in our quick launch, we have shared documents and we are right in our document library now. So from this document library, we can go ahead and upload documents. So let me go ahead and add a document real quick. And I believe on my desktop, I have a test document. We'll just upload that. Okay, pretty easy. Uh, now anyone that has access to this site will have access to this document library. Uh, each document library can also have a separate permission group. However, in my experience, it's been best practice to uh, give people permissions to sites, not to document libraries or to specific documents. The capabilities are there. It just becomes a maintenance nightmare in the long run. So uh, in this case, we have the PMO office site. Everyone in the PMO uh, office site has been given permissions to the site, so I don't need to restrict the access any further. All right, so let's talk about working with this document. So as you can see, we have a type. You can tell it's a Word document and the name of the document here, and then when it was modified and who it was modified by. So there is a little contextual menu here. 
this will allow you to do several different things. You can view the document properties. So if I view the document properties, it'll just bring up a little information window. It tells me the name and title. This becomes a little bit more exciting when you have metadata around the, this particular document uh, or this library because you can see a lot more information here. You can go ahead and edit that information by clicking the contextual menu and go to edit properties. So at this point, you could change the name of the document. And you can also add a title. One of the very useful aspects is this ability, if you go down here to where it says send to, email a link. Uh, what this will allow you to do is, um, after you store a document in SharePoint, the purpose of putting it in SharePoint is that it's not going to be floating around in email, like 15,000 different versions. As an example, say the PMO office is working on a budget sheet. Um, what would happen before SharePoint is one person might create this document and then send it out to 10 people for them to look at it. Then each one of those person uh, people are making changes, sending it back to each other, and sooner or later you don't know what version of the document you're working on. You don't know uh, what changes are made by who, things like that. Um, what this will allow us to do is just email a link to the document so there's only one living document instead of 15, 10 different versions floating around in email. Additionally, what it'll do is re it will alleviate some of the load that it puts on your email server as far as being able to have to store all those additional copies of that document. So you can just click email a link and what this will do is just go ahead and launch your email program. So I use Microsoft Outlook and it will bring it up in a window here in a second. So here's the actual link to the file. So if we actually click on this link, it will bring up the file. So as long as the people who are receiving this email have access to this site, they will be able to open this file. And I actually got prompted on my other screen, so I'm going to go ahead and just log in real quick. And you'll see here in a second that my document will go ahead and open. And here's my document here. All right, great. So that opened fine. So it's a nice feature to, to use. We use it exclusively here at Total Tech Resource. Um, when I have new employees start, the first thing I show them is how to send a document in email uh, just by sending a link instead of uh, uploading a document into the email message and sending it around. So it takes a little getting used to, but in the end, it's uh, very beneficial. All right. So now I am the site owner and I have access to do things with this uh, document library. So if we go back to the PMO site here, You'll see now that I have my shared documents, so I can navigate back into shared documents. And you'll see across the top, I have several different tabs. So let's just explore the documents tab real quick. In this tab, you can go ahead and create a new document. Remember earlier when uh, you got to choose what type of document you wanted uh, for this library, we selected uh, Word document. So we can actually click here and say New Document. It's essentially like doing File New in Word. So I'll just bring up Microsoft Word with a blank document. You also have the ability here to upload documents. So we can say upload a, a single document or multiple documents. I have a little code here, so let me just go ahead and say run that, a little ActiveX control. What that should allow me to do now when I hit upload document is I can upload multiple documents. So this is a really nice feature if you're trying to upload 5, 10, 15 files, maybe even up to you know several hundred files at one time. You can go ahead and select this, and then you essentially just drag and drop the files right on here. All right, so that's a, a nice feature. Uh, you also have alerts, so you can basically say alerts uh, on a particular document. You can actually do that uh, in several different places. So uh, right here on this document itself, you can say alert me, and if anyone makes any changes to that document or you want to be notified if it uh, gets deleted or something like that, you can go ahead and hit the alert me here, and then I'll ask you a bunch of questions about how you want to get alerted, things like that. So uh, very nice feature to have. You can also send alerts to other people. Okay, so this is our basic uh, document library document settings. You can create folders here. Uh, we'll actually explore using metadata uh, in another 
series of videos that I'll do pretty soon. So I'm a big proponent against using folders if we don't have to. Um, there's a different way to organize data in SharePoint versus using folders. We can actually use uh, a subset of metadata to say what type of document is this. Um, and the, the type of documents could essentially match like a folder structure. It makes it a lot easier to find things so you don't have to dig through folders. Uh, it's something that I work with my clients uh, on on a day-to-day -day basis, moving from like file shares to SharePoint. All right, so let's just go ahead and go into our library here. On our library ribbon, we have uh, several other options here. We have views, which we'll cover in a separate video. Um, you also have like uh, options like working with designer and permissions for the library, workflow settings, things like that. Let's just go ahead and click on library settings. Library settings will allow you to control aspects of the library. So as an example, the title, description, and navigation. So we can go ahead and click on that. Here is the name of the the library which we set up when we create the library as well as the description and then do you want to display this on a quick launch or not okay so you can go ahead and edit those let's go back into uh, my shared documents real quick and go back to library settings all right we have versioning settings here versioning is a great feature uh, it allows for multiple versions of any one document to be kept uh, in the past what we might do is create a document called test document we make changes to it then we call it test one then we make more changes we call it test two so forth and so on uh, in SharePoint you don't have to do that you just use the same document and you make changes to it and based off of the settings that we have right here it will keep a certain number of versions so as you can see here, we say require content approval for submitted items. We can say yes. Um, we can, this would uh, put like a little workflow around a particular document. Um, we also have the versioning settings here. So we can actually say create major versions. So this is when a document has been um, checked in. Um, so you would have a one, two, three, four. You have create major and minor. Uh, this would be the equivalent of uh, creating a document, saving the document into SharePoint, every little save that you do would be a minor. If you uploaded a new version over top of the existing one, then it would become a major. Uh, there's also another feature called checking in and checking out, which we'll explore uh, in another video that also gives you uh, similar options. Then you can actually limit the number of versions to retain. Uh, some of my customers definitely get concerned with uh, the amount of content that they're going to be saving in their document libraries. They don't want it to be uh, excessive, so that you can actually go ahead and limit. Uh, this is something that I normally do. We can say keep the last 10 major versions and the last minor five versions. Okay. Then there's this last item here, require checkout. Uh, checkout is a feature that allows one person to exclusively own that document for editing, and then when they're done, they would check it back in. Uh, we'll explore that a little bit later in some other videos. I think it's definitely a positive if used right, but it can also become a very annoying feature as well. Go ahead and hit OK. All right, let's just show you quickly how the versioning works. In our shared documents, I have this document right here. So we'll just go ahead and edit this document. We brought it up here in Word. So let's just go ahead and enable the editing. And then we'll say Jason's edits. And we'll just go ahead and save this and close it. Now if we take this particular document and we hit the pull down, since we enabled versioning, we have an additional contextual option here. So notice we also have publish a major version. So let's just go ahead and look at the version history real quick. Now the first version I uploaded is 1.0 and since I made some changes to it, we have 1.1. So you'll see that we have uh, several different versions here. If I go back in here, and click here and say publish a major version. It'll go ahead and ask me for some version comments. Now if I look at my version history, I have one and two. 
All right, so that's all the time that we have for this uh, demo. I will come back and do a little bit expanded version of this uh, following. Thank you very much, and have a great day.